to do this or that or the other to reach God. But the Christian faith is the only faith in the whole world where God first loved man. So, in fact, the, the Bible is very clear elsewhere as well. Romans 5.8, God demonstrates his own love for, in, for us in this. When we were still sinners, Christ died for us. First love. So, who loved us first? Christ. So, 1 John, summarizing it into the words F-I-R-S-T-J-O-H-N, the word, the letter F stands, uh, reminds me of first love. So, God's first love, which is expressed in John 4.10 and John 4. 19 as well now not only that in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 the Bible says he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy in fact to be holy so God chose us to be holy it doesn't say that we are already holy there are places in the Bible which says that we are already holy uh, uh, but it says it's God's plan that we be holy which means uh, God will give us the power but we also should take the efforts to be holy and he chose us for this purpose before the creation of the world. Now, that's something I want you to understand. You know, uh, uh, how do you feel when you say that the God of all the universe first chose to love you? Now, I know some, I know, I've talked to some women, yeah, some young women who take great pride in telling the whole world that how their husbands, uh, in fact, came after them. Now recently, Sri Devi was talking in an India Today event. I believe it's stage managed, uh, though it's actually Boni Kapoor, Sri Devi's husband, who actually described to the whole world a battery of media in front of him, him how he chose, how he went after Sri Devi for ten years to marry her. But I think uh, I'm sure they had a understanding before the event that uh, you know Sri Devi must have told her husband, "You better tell the whole world how you came after me." Because Boni Kapoor was already a married man at that time. He had watched a Tamil movie, Sri Devi was acting and then he fell head in, head over, heels in love with her. And I don't know, it's just, this is a sinful thing. Married, loving, a married man falling in love with a single girl, sinful. But you know, uh, he this he talk, talked about it in, with great pride, 10 years persistent. When our father died, he was there in the airport to receive Sri Devi, he drove her there and he gave her the best treatment and pursued her, pursued her, pursued her till she said yes okay now uh, if the if the the fact that a guy loved a girl it was a guy who actually proposed to a girl and it was a guy who pursued a girl if that fact can give a girl a great joy how much greater joy can you and me whether we are males or females now how much greater joy does it give for us to know the god of all the universe the creator of the entire universe he first chose us he first loved us. That's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It must humble us. It must make us grateful. It must make us grateful. In fact, there's a poem uh, which Dr. Zacharias would quote. It's a 182 line poem, uh, first published in the year 1893. It's called The Hound of Heaven. It was written by an Englishman named Francis Thompson. And Francis Thompson was a, was a, was a drug addict was a genius who turned into a drug addict he was on the he was running away from god and in this poem francis thompson talks about how he f i fled him down the nights down the days i fled him down the ar arches of the years i fled him down through my lustful ways of my mind in the midst of tears and then he says our fondest blind blindest weakest i am he thou seekest Thou dravest love from thee who dravest me. He's talking about God like like this. Uh, you know, you, have you seen the Vodafone ad? How a, a puppy would run wherever the master goes would follow. So God is that puppy, uh, the hound of heaven. He's pursuing you till you say yes to him. He loves you so much. And that's what 1 John talks about. In fact, uh, love is a major theme of this stuff. In fact, uh, uh, love is a major theme of 1 John. It's, we are also reminded of Jesus, uh, the, the parable that Jesus narrated, the, the parable of the uh, in Luke 15 where the rebellious son, in fact, the rebellious son wished his daddy was dead. In fact, you, what he was actually saying is, Daddy, you die? Okay, and then you, 
then you give me a property give me a property because property divide, division usually takes place after the death of the father daddy i wish you were dead and i want the property and he took the property and ran and he spent it on wild living on and then there was a time when he was eating pig food and then he came back to his senses he repented okay now when i say god loves us first it doesn't undermine the importance of repentance as some bible teachers would like to tell we don't have to repent that man came back to his senses and then he took a u turn and came but the the fact is the father was already you know the father long before the son saw him the father saw him when he was still a long way off his father saw him felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him the bible says in luke 15 20 the father loved the son so much the first love and elsewhere in the same book 1 john chapter 4 uh let's read third word third chapter and verse 1 third chapter and verse 1 third chapter and verse 1 the love of the father okay so deeply now we can be so the love of god for us is what great it is not a little love but a lavish love i think some versions are king james version might say how great is the love of the father that yes lavished on us Now I remember uh, doing the Steve Jobs Bible study when Steve Jobs passed away, and I remember uh, I narrated not, not I think it was not in the Bible study. It was like it was in a quiz how I narrated uh, how I uh, uh, read a about Steve Jobs where he was dating a girl. He took her to the uh, he uh, they were walking down the street and they were look they were in, in a in a beautiful shop. There was a pretty dress, and Steve Jobs told that girl uh, that look at that dress, look at that dress, and then the girl went. and then they said and the girl said let's go check it out and they went and then she tried it on and then steve jobs just walked out of the shop without buying the dress for her his love for her was even though he was a millionaire genius was little little love you know he didn't feel that it was important for him to buy the dress for that girl but god's love for us is lavish love lavish love so and uh, what should be a don't buy a dress <laughs> that's his love is little <laughs> Yeah, no, no. that's right. That's right. Huh? Okay, oh, now, oh, you you know exactly what my wife is getting at. <laughs> okay, we'll settle that later. That's Now, right. how do we respond to this lavish love? Chapter two, verse fifteen. How should we our response be? I do not love the word or anything. Okay, Now, that's the that's the that's that's the problem now with the Google generation. God loves us. His love for us is a prior love. It's a first love. But we are in love with something else. We are in love with what? The world. we are in love with the world and its pleasures so it's a question that we must ask ourselves every day with whom am i in love with this morning with what am i in love with this afternoon that's a question that we must ask ourselves okay i want to mention another f f okay felt f i r s t j o h n felt with my hands seen with my eyes recording first john okay let's read john chapter 1 verse 1 1 john 1 1 here what we announce to everyone what are you announce to everyone to the world of faith okay he was already here from the beginning okay we have heard him we have seen him with our eyes we have seen him with our eyes who's speaking here john. here is a man who walked with jesus for 3 plus years He was the man who was at the foot of the cross when Jesus died. Here is a man who was not mentioning hearsay about Jesus. Do you know what what I mean by hearsay? Did you hear that girl? You know, we we hear a lot of hearsays. Do you know that girl is going out with that boy in our church? Gossip. Do you know that this actor is going around with that actor? Do you know how John Abraham broke up with Bipasha Basu? Do you know that John Abraham met a Banker who was training in the same gym, which Bipasha and John used to attend together, and then there was an affair. Anyway, do you know? Yes, sir. There's no way we can confirm this. But John is not talking about hearsay about Jesus. He's giving a eyewitness account. It's a personal account. Some things that he has seen, things that he has seen with his own eyes. Uh, okay, now that's very important. That our witness of Jesus is a personal account. Now. Uh, very often in fact uh, i'm glad when you have involved in ministry in very uh, various ways sometimes we can do ministry in a very impersonal way 
which means uh, without going to God's presence directly and kneeling down and reading God's word, meditating God's word, receiving God's message from him and preaching God's word, we only live on saliva or uh, sp spit. What do I mean by that? What others have already prepared, we, we use and that is our only source. In fact, we must learn from others. We must use study aids and we, I'll come to that. We must use good commentaries and all that. But do we, do we have, have we taken time to, to spend time in God's presence? Now, uh, I want to quote from a book called uh, by Jim Baker. Now, this is not somebody else writing about Jim Baker. I usually won't quote such things in my message. Uh, but this is a preacher talking about his own downfall with remarkable humility. Maybe the, one of the, the preacher with the, the greatest humility I've ever seen. A man who did several things wrong in his life and he recorded it all after repenting from all his sins. A book titled, I Was Wrong. I Was Wrong. And in that book, he says, uh, he's in prison because of various things. He landed up in prison, this great preacher of the gospel. Okay, he's in prison. And then he says, in that book, he says, when I began to study the scriptures while I was in prison in depth, something I'm embarrassed and ashamed to admit, I rarely took time to do so during the hectic years of my constant building and ministering at PTL. PTL was the name of his ministry, Praise the Lord Ministries. He, he says, I never took, took time to read the Bible, to read the Bible when I was uh, leading a big ministry. Now I'm preaching to myself and I'm preaching to you, young ministers of the gospel, I'm sure. And I'm, I'm glad many of you are involved in ministries in various ways through the local church and through other organizations. I'm glad. But nothing substitutes you going directly into God's presence, you reading God's word for yourself, you understanding what Jesus has got to say for you and for your generation and you sharing that message. No substitute. Let your message that you share with, with your people, the people you influence be a personal message, an eyewitness sort of message. Okay. And then another F I want to talk about. Okay. I want, I want to talk about another, uh, another F, fooling yourself, definite possibility of fooling yourself, fooling yourself, definite possibility recording first John. Okay. Now probably you heard of uh, Bitti Mohanty, a man who raped a foreign tourist in India, in Raj, uh, Rajasthan. And then he was caught and then he was put in prison and then he was on parole. He said he wanted to visit his, uh, some, his family members in Orissa. And then he jumped parole and then he went to, uh, to An Anandpur, uh, no, Kerala. In fact, in, in between he went, uh, went to Anandpur Sai Baba Center there and he started serving as a teacher in one of the schools. And then he changed his name, identity, identity and then he went to a got a job in State Bank of Travancore. And he started working there and then the police, after the Delhi rape, December rape, started putting pictures of guys who were raped and got away with it. And his pictures, uh, somebody saw the picture and sent a courier to the bank manager saying that the guy who was working in your bank looks like a, a rapist gone absconding. And then uh, to cut a long story short, this man called Bitti Mohanty realized, you know, what, uh, what Abraham Lincoln once said. What, what did he say? You, you can fool some people all the time. No, no, some people sometimes. You can fool some people. You can fool some of the people all the time. And all the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time. And you can't fool yourself. And you can't fool God. But, you know, that's what I would preach. In fact, I want to tell you something. In 1 John chapter, uh, 1 John, uh, we read of the possibility of you fooling yourself. Okay, 1 John chapter 1 verse 6, 6 onwards, you can fool yourself. Or oh, verse 8, verse 8, 1 John 1, 8. We say we have fellowship with God, okay. but go on living in spiritual darkness. Yes. We are not living in the truth. We are not living in the truth. Verse 8. We say we have no sin. We, we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. So is deceiving yourself, fooling yourself possible? Sometimes you can live in sin. And that sin can come crop up anywhere. It could be a tinge of casteism in your brain somewhere. And you don't realize it. Or it could be a tinge of prejudice. You think all Biharis are like this. All Malayalis are like this. 
and you you know there, there's something prejudice or casteism or or it could be a, a, a sin which you have done so often it doesn't seem like sin and you, you think uh, you can continue living that way in that way that, so and you so effectively you have deceived yourself it's possible but the bible says repeated in fact uh, paul says at least three times do not be deceived first corinthians 15:33 do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals in fact that's one thing that young people say what is wrong if i'm going to in fact uh, be very close to an unbeliever and even fall in love with an unbeliever they don't understand bad company ruins good good character so a believer falling in love with an unbeliever is a classic case of self deception and then galatians 6 7 paul says do not be deceived god is not mocked for what a man sows he will reap now a believer living in secret sin knowing he will never thinking he will not be caught ever he is in self deception because one day he will be caught maybe on this side of eternity if not on that side of eternity okay do not be deceived and then james also says do not be deceived james 116 okay now another another letter f forget not the foundation emphasis teaching book of john okay uh, 1 john 1 1 and 2 13 says john includes teaching that you have heard from the beginning verse 2 24 have you seen that this is a teaching that you have heard from the beginning and uh, and he says this is the word of life and the the characteristic thing is it is heard from the beginning because john is responding to some false teachers i'm going to come to you these false teachers are talk, talking some new stuff uh, they are deviating from the the gospel i'll come to that in a moment what they taught but i want to tell you something there is a craze in the present christian world for new things new things which not which is not explicitly recorded in the bible that we should practice the craze for new things maybe uh, i i don't want to go into the details okay wha- wha- you must go and get prayed with that preacher you know what when he prays when he prays something what is not even written in the bible will happen i don't want that i don't want that experience no when i went to do a senior man of god when i was this is the beginning of my preaching life i was invited for a camp in Germ- germany it was year 1998 i was a 22 or 23 year old at that time and i went to the senior man of god we went into literally we drove up to a mountain and he was training me to preach in that youth camp and this preacher told me i have never forgotten this word he says as preachers duke we have only very we have a very simple responsibility he said we must make people read the bible pray more read the bible more be in a fellowship more and witness more four things don't try to invent new things whatever you preach come for these four things i have never forgotten that and even if you uh, by mistake if you have attended all my 56 bible studies i would come to the same thing but the root will be different so if you think why this guy is he doesn't have a new thing to say no i will not say a new thing because i want to declare what was there from the beginning like one john as it is written in one john okay and then uh, not only the, the doctrine of god in fact i would recommend all of that that you get a a good systematic theology book even if you have no interest in bible college j rodman williams is a good systematic theologian then we have wayne grudem we have uh, mela j erickson some good evangelical bible believing good systematic the- systematic theology book and study the doctrine of god up to the doctrine of the last things the all the nine nine or nine or 10 major doctrines that we have study it and stick to it stick to it okay f so much for f i idol worships danger warning 1 john idol worships danger warning 1 john the movie swami rara released telugu movie released in 2013 i read okay it's a story of a stolen idol of ganesha from sri padmana nabha swami temple in tiruvananthapuram and how it changes hands and finally hands in, uh, lands in the hand of uh, surya and banu and ravi and these three people uh, make pickpocketing look breezy and sometimes even sexy okay this is this is what i read about the movie uh, swami rara the story of the movie swami rara which apparently did well okay now uh, you might say i will never go and steal a idol in fact i don't worship idols i don't steal idols but you know what john one john disagrees as he writes one john look at the last verse of one john john the last verse John last week. We know that the Son of God. Okay. 
John 5.21. 1 John 5.21. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. Okay, that's an interpreted version. Dear children, keep away from idols. idols. He's writing to believers. He calls them children. They are the children of the Lord Jesus and, be, and by the virtue of his age, he's an old man. They are, his, they are young believers of his church and he tells them, keep away from idols. Not Maybe he's not probably talking about a, a, an idol like uh, 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 of a God X or Y or Z, but it could be things that they have given more importance than God himself. Why is, wh what is it that uh, in your life that takes God's place? Yes. That takes God's place. Yes. Yeah, the cell phone. The, uh, the Android phone can take the place of Almighty God. The Android can take the place of Almighty. The laptop can become your Lord. The laptop can become your Lord. The phone can become your father, the heavenly father. And why is idol worship dangerous? And I, I want to just quote two scriptures. Psalm 115 and verse 8 and Psalm 135 and verse 18. Two scriptures, same same things talked about in the two scriptures. Psalm 115 verse 8, Psalm 135 and verse 18. Those who make them will be like them. So why, why should you not worship an idol? Those who make, those who worship them or those who make them, or those who think about them, or those who see them, or those who imagine them, those who dream them, those who spend time with them, will be like them. So that brings me to a, the heart of another debate that we are having, where a six-year-old girl, which is a girl as old as my own little daughter, was recently raped in Delhi. And uh, they said the guys who did that were watching porn. Uh, and then uh, that, that led to a debate uh, surrounding Sunny Leon, an adult star uh, who is in a movie act uh, along with John Abraham. And the, and the newspaper headline said, John Abraham defends Sunny Leon on porn debate. This is April 25th. I'm talking to you from the very, from very latest news. And they give various reasons why uh, John, John Abraham gives various reasons why. He thinks, uh, you know, he disagrees. He says you can watch porn and still not do what porn depicts. But you know what? You know what? When you come to the holy word of God, okay, I can give you some examples. The Bible, the Bible says, the Bible talks about the powerful influence of the eye upon our lives. In fact, Jesus did. In Matthew 6, 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. So Jesus is saying what you see in their eye impacts you. And then uh, some of you were there in the National Youth Conference of the Assemblies of God uh, last year, October, when I talked about Lot, who deliberately chose to move to uh, the city of Sodom, which was like a Osho community. Have you, have you heard of Osho community in, in Pune, where people are indulging in various kinds of sexual acts openly and there's no... Nothing like that. In fact, he chose to go there. He watched live porn and that had influenced him. What he had watched it influenced him so much so when there was a knock on the door and some men were wanting sex, he was willing to send his own daughter to go and sleep with those men. How did that change take place? You know, I have a daughter. I would give my life for my daughter. But if I would send my own daughter to have sex with a stranger or a bunch of strangers, which it means that talks about the power, the, the, how much porn can change you. You know, what you watch can change you and your moral systems can go for a huge six. Uh, Chris Gale six. Uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, yes. He wanted to save his guests. Yeah, that is there. But I also want to, I also want to say that his morals also changed. His morals oh, also changed because see, he deliberately see, chose to settle see, in that city. It is to save the guests. It is rather, rather he, they have sex with the girl rather than the guy guests. But... Uh, that is there. That no, no, no. His hospitality is something to be lauded. But that is not the way you express your hospitality. So I stand by my point saying what you watch no, no, influences you. Stand you stand by your point, yes. but that is not the point. Of your, I mean, I but in that story, I, I believe, I believe we can see that. We can see that. He has been, he has been influenced. In fact, uh, no, no, first Peter talks about see, how he how settled it. How do you think those, I mean, that situation could have been uh, No, you know, he handled. he deliberately chose. In fact, uh, he Abraham went to the other side. So he deliberately chose and he was he has been things have happened around. I him. don't agree with you on this. Maybe all of us won't agree. Yeah. But we will agree when we see other other stories. We'll agree when agree when we hear Ted Bunty's story. Ted Bunty was a famous serial killer in the United States 
and he was executed on 24th Jan 1989 and he killed 28 he killed 28 women he learned to lure the women into his car by various forms of deception and Ted Bunty confessed to James Dobson, a family counselor in the United States, that he was watching violent forms of perverted porn. That's a story which goes along with the Lord's story. But uh, definitely, uh, this Lord thing is not something. To okay, be I'll tell you two more stories. We're, this is not convincing. Two more. Aiken saw. Aiken saw the loot, and he kept looking at the loot, and he, and it influenced him, and he stole the loot. A loot that you were supposed to that destroy. Okay, but this is definitely not. And in fact, uh, uh, I, I'll come to the other, other other side of that as well. Aiken saw, and then Eve saw. In fact, in the in the book in the Genesis, no, Eve saw. So, and then in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs twenty three thirty one, it says, "Do not look at wine when it's red." Look, looking at wine is a a moral issue, not like a looking at a naked woman. Do not look at wine when it's red. When it sparkles in the cup, because when you keep looking at wine, Proverbs 23 says, you know, it talks about, it says it's all the more easy for that wine to get into your system and make you an alcoholic. Now, argument's sake, even if it was, you don't actually copy porn, for argument's sake, when you look at scriptures, when you look at Leviticus 18, a woman's nakedness belongs to the eyes of the husband alone. That's the teaching no. of Leviticus 18. That and then 2 Samuel 11.31. Uh, the Lord was very displeased with what David did. So even if da David was not influenced by what he saw, it still displeases the Lord. Yeah, okay. but the first point is wrong. Okay, but I, I, I want to say whether you you might disagree with me on the first point, mm -hmm. but you have to agree with me on the second point. Yeah, definitely I agree with the second but point. But I'm sure there are some of you who would agree with me for the first point and second point. No, none of them will agree. No, you can't speak for the others. Okay, no. now, okay, that's that, that's something. Uh, it's a no, digression. You don't agree. <laughs> Influence is influence. Now, see, I believe Lot's story is illustration for what Jesus preached about the eyes. Uh, it's it, it it is an illustration. Uh, okay, now let's go. Let's go. Okay, F. So much for the F, and I want to mention the next next letter. Next letter. Okay, we'll debate. We'll count to that in the question answer session. Okay. Okay. Shall we go? Shall we move ahead? Shall we move ahead? Okay. We'll settle it. We'll settle it Okay. Now. In fact, uh, I also have written here the first sin of the human race, eyes are involved. So it's about fiercely guarding our eyes. So it's like a simple thing. In fact, you, uh, you, let's say that you, you have an addiction of buying the latest gadgets. So I would say if you go to the Chroma store and keep looking at that Samsung S4, every time you're going to buy it. So how much more that works when it comes to an emotional thing as watching porn? So that's what I'm saying. Okay, I, I'm coming down. I, I know I'm coming down pretty strongly, but I think we need to. Okay, uh, F I, incarnation challenging present. Incarnation challenges presenting First John. Incarnation challenges. The book of John. You know, there was a bunch of people who challenged the incarnation of Jesus. Okay, we read that in chapter one, one to four, chapter two, twenty to twenty-five. Chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Almost every chapter, there is a there is a bunch of people who challenge the incarnation of Christ. What is the incarnation of Jesus? What is the theology, doctrine of the incarnation of Jesus? Incarnation of Jesus. Jesus became flesh. Who is Jesus? God. Does God have a flesh? No. But Jesus chose to have flesh and bone. So there are some people who didn't believe it. There are some people who did not believe it. These false teachers deny Jesus' incarnation. And that was the spirit of the Antichrist, chapter 2. And these false teachers also love the world. They love the world. They deny Jesus' incarnation. Okay, now I want to tell you something. Let's read 1 John 4 2. 1 John 4 2, and let's get a hang of it. Okay, go ahead. By this you know the spirit of God. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Jesus Christ. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Is of God. And every spirit which does not confess Jesus okay. is not of God. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus came in the flesh is not of God. So that is an acid test. This an does acid this person who is preaching, does he believe that Jesus Christ is hundred percent human? And 100% God. 
If that person doesn't believe, he's a cult. Okay, yeah. Jehovah Witnesses do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. So they are a cult. Now when I went to buy a thumbs up so that we can have it after the Bible study, there in that shop, I found a Jehovah Witness magazine. Some of these guys have come knocking at my house and I, and I try to be generally hospitable, uh, hospitable, but I can't challenge my wife. I mean, she's way ahead. I'm, she's 100, I'm 90. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm 13 marks. But I try to be hospitable. I try to welcome people, although I'm not a great conversation. But when these Jehovah Witnesses preachers came to my house, I looked at that man and he said, you will fry in hell, uncle, if you go around deceiving people by teaching this doctrine, uh, by teaching whatever you're teaching. And at the core of Jehovah Witnesses teaching is a teaching that Jesus Christ is not God. So that's the heart of every cult. So who is a, a, a preacher who does not agree that Jesus is 100% human and 100% God? He is a false teacher. So he is challenging the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Now, why is it very important? Because the, uh, why, why was this happening? In those times, people believed the body was evil. There was a belief that the body was evil. So how can God have a body? So in fact, even now, some people believe bodies, uh, bodies, uh, bodies are evil. You know, uh, uh, it, it finds expression in various ways. For example, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, especially, uh, sometimes some people will think, okay, the body is evil, so anything that happens in my body the, uh, is, is evil. For example, that's why some people, even after they get married, you know, they don't want to enjoy having normal marital relationship with their husbands. Why? They believe body is evil. It's coming from somewhere. It was there in the first century. It is there even now. But the Bible says, some people don't want to get married. Because they think, okay, if after I marry, this, so many things will happen in my life. And all, all this will happen to my body. So the body is evil. So I don't want this. So they think by staying unmarried, they are more spiritual than the others. God may have called you to be single. That's another thing. But the Bible says that, you know, within the boundaries of uh, marriage, our bodies can experience pleasure, sexual pleasure. We read that in the book of Proverbs 5, 18, and 18 to 20. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, bodies are evil. Okay. Now, uh, that's why we should take care of our body. Try to be fit. Maybe you're not, you may not challenge uh, 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 one, uh, Robin Van Parsi, the football player of Manchester United. You may not have his stamina. You may not run 90 minutes and play football like Robin Van Parsi. But at least, at least do what you can to keep fit. Now the I used to go to a gym, but now the only exercise I do is I this is a du, we live in a duplex house, a rented place, God's God's grace. So I go up the steps at least ten times a day, especially late at night. You know my, when we are about to sleep, my wife will say, "Can you go check whether the third floor is the door is locked?" And I go, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it because that's my exercise time. That's my exercise time. So. Uh, you know, we need to find some ways to love our bodies, to, to look presentable, to dress well. And when, you, when, God bless, uh, bless, uh, get, when we get into a marriage relationship, you know, have uh, uh, earth-shattering sex with our spouse. Okay, all that is part of the package. But, and uh, these guys thought bodies was bad and then they said Jesus didn't have a body. Uh, uh, and then there's a verse in the, I think, fifth chapter where it says, talks about three witnesses. Can you read that, please? Three witnesses. Uh, water, blood. And Jesus Christ was to which be which verse is that? Sixth verse. Okay, sixth fifth verse. chapter, sixth verse. Okay. And, as, and Jesus Christ was revealed as God's son by his baptism in water. Okay, that's the interpreted trans. By his in uh, baptism in his water and water. And by shedding his blood on the cross. Okay. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Okay. Now, and if you have a pen, if you have a pen, uh, underline the word "not by water only." Underline that. Not by water only, but by water. water and blood. So the false teaching here was Jesus became a God at, after his baptism or during his baptism. Till then he was a normal person. Till then he was Jesus. At his baptism he became God. Then God cannot die. So Jesus, when Jesus was about to die, then uh, uh, Jesus Christ, Christ did not die, but Jesus died. So they really, this is how false preachers talk. So Jesus is only God between his baptism and his death. And he didn't really die. In fact, even our Islamic friends would say that. that Islamic friends also will say that Jesus did not die. So only for that 33-year-old period, he was God. But the Bible says Jesus was God all through 
Uh, in fact, I, I don't have the time to take you through all the verses. He was God all through. Even he, Jesus, nobody kill, nobody can kill God. Jesus, in, in, uh, Jesus said, I lay down my life out of my own accord. So that was his last, that was his going, Jesus going the last mile to say, I love you. I'm like you. And you know, I want to be a high priest. I want to be a friend. You know, all those things, all those things. Okay. So that, that was the problem. And then, but what does John say? Jesus, uh, water, uh, blood, uh, what did I ask you to underline? So we have not, only water, water. not only with water and the blood. And the blood. And the blood. So what, when John writes that, he's actually saying, Jesus was, Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was God, even at his death. Not only in his baptism, but also in his death. Okay, that's, that's, that's something we must also understand. Okay, then uh, another eye, incarnation, reason presenting one John as well. Now, why did Jesus come, come to this world? If you ask a question, how will you answer? Why did Jesus come to the world? To take our sins. Okay, you can actually use a verse from John, to and 1 John to answer that verse, uh, answer that question. Why did Jesus come to this world? 1 John 3, 8. Incarnation, reason presenting 1 John. 1 John 3, verse 8. Why did the uh, Son of Man come to the world? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. It shows it belongs to the devil. Okay. Who has been sinning since the beginning. Okay. But the Son of God came to destroy these works of the devil. Jesus, why did you come to this world? To destroy the works of the devil. devil. You know, when you're having coffee with your, uh, uh, with your friends in your corporate company or coffee with your college friends in your college and, uh, uh, you know, invariably there will be a talk about evil. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Do you know what happened in Boston? Do you know what Barack Obama said? Barack Obama is a pluralist guy. He tries to accommodate everybody. Uh, but but he talked about evil. He said, you know what? Uh, he, he said, uh, you have shown us Boston in the face of evil. You have shown us Boston in the face of evil. Americans will lift up what is good. So even pluralistic Barack Obama believes in evil. So when there is evil... There is an evil doer, and there is an evil doer. There is an ultimate evil doer, and who is that guy? What is his name? Satan. And Jesus came down to this world to challenge that evil doer. So, is there a good some, some ever evil converse? Any anybody uses evil? In fact, even pluralists will use evil. They may believe all religions are the same, but they will use the word evil. That's when you have to catch them and bring John three. That this verse from John three and bring the gospel. You know what? Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. You can bring the gospel in that conversation. Okay. Uh, F-I-R. Relationship with brothers talking about one John. Now, uh, uh, two brash jelly boys stomp towards each other. One mouth expletives. And other howl. Kya bola? Kya bola tu? His eyes bloodshot with rage. It was a scene straight over road rage a fight from the streets of the national capital. Only the pro the protagonist in this case, protagonist in this case was Virat Kohli and Gautam Gambhir and the scene of the spat the Chinnaswami. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? In fact, another Christian cricket writer interestingly wrote, it's, these are very interesting lines. When, the, when India won the World Cup, he was chatted around by his teammates. Young Virat Kohli, had then captured the hearts of many with the words. He had carried the Indian team for 21 years. Now it's our turn to carry Sachin Tendulkar. If Thursday's incident, the day when he fought with Gautam Gambhir, is anything to go, go by, it seems that while Virat has been accurate in his appreciation of how the great Sachin carried the nation on his shoulders, the Delhi lad somehow totally missed how the master carried himself. 21 years of cricket, not once. Will you see Sachin Tendulkar lose his school while he's in the field? Not once. Virat Kohli wanted to carry Sachin on his shoulder, but he didn't notice how. Carried himself. In fact, that's the message of one John. One John says, "You love God. How many of you love God?" Everybody says, "Raise the hand." You love God. If God is your model. Sachin is not a model. God is a model. Do you behave like God when it comes to relating with your friends? Do you not carry yourself like life? Not all the time. It's difficult. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for us. Okay. Now, uh, I want to talk. I want to tell you that this is another major theme of this 
relationship is a major theme of this chapter. For example, chapter 2, 7 to 11, 1 John 2, 7 to 11, chapter 3, 11 to 24, chapter 4, 7 to 21. Okay, now, uh, in fact, John tries, ties two themes. God loves us and died for us and we have to love one another. This is a classic. How many of you know John 3, 16? By, remember, God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him. So Jesus died for us, John 3.16. What is 1 John 3.16? What is 1 John 3.16? You die for your own brother. Jesus died for you, very good, very fantastic, great theology. Because Jesus died, you died, you lay down your life. Not, first of all, start with laying off your ego. Then we can talk about laying down your life. First, start with laying down your ego, your rights. The fight, in fact, uh, the fight for the the remote. You got simple thing. Relationship, relationship. Now I want to keep going. Yeah, so that's why uh, I always give the remote to my wife, and she watches. Uh, but of course, I I move. More things through my son. Okay, I won't, I won't get, give me that. Okay. Uh, okay, then uh, F-I-R-S. Stuck in sin phenomenon. Talking about 1 John. Stuck in sin. Now, at least seven references to sin in the book of John. Okay, now, uh, book of John, 1 John talks about what is the true nature of the child of God. And uh, the teaching is, God's true children do not continue to live in sin. But neither are they sinlessly perfect. These are words by Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart, two of the leading, uh, you know, one is a New Testament, New Testament scholar, there's an Old Testament scholar uh, from leading evangelical seminaries in the United States. They've written some excellent books and they, have, they are trying to summarize uh, the teaching in John, 1 John, uh, the book of 1 John. God's true children do not continue to live in sin, but neither are they sinlessly perfect. 1 John 1 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one with the other, and the blood of Jesus' his Son cleanses from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, which which means we need to examine our life every day. Is there a sin in me? And many times there is sin. None of us are sinlessly perfect. So we need to look into our lives and see, not like a ritual. I know in a particular denomination, this verse is repeated every Sunday. And so much so it's become a ritual, not ritual, sincerely, from the bottom of our heart. Is there any sin in me? Okay. And then 1 John 2, 1, uh, 1 John 2, 1 says, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So we, have, we do sin, what, whom do we have? Jesus. And Jesus is actually talking to the Father on our behalf. So Jesus is saying, give him one more chance. Give him one more year. Add one more birthday to his life. Do not cut down this tree called Duke. Give him one more chance. That's the that's how Jesus pleads with us, uh, pleads with the Father for us. Okay. Now 1 John 3 4 says, everyone who makes the practice of sinning. Also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. In fact, one while we say all this, 1 John 3, 4 basically says, you don't use the grace of God as a credit card for sin. Just because this will happen, don't get very smart and think, okay, then I can continue going on the same sin. In fact, I see this all around, you know. I see this young people. In fact, uh, one, uh, uh, you know, one relationship, they fall in love with the unbeliever. They go, they go across all physical, uh, uh, all, all boundaries almost end up having sex or if not intercourse but outer course and then they're all right for some time then they'll go to the other unbeliever or if they fall in love with a believer and they cross all limits with that believer and then all right for few months and then go back do not be like the pig which goes back to the wallowing in its mud be like the sheep jesus called you to be like a sheep sheep generally do not go back to all the the wallowing the mud you know the sheep are more steady than the pig be a sheep not a pig not a pig. Okay, stuck in sin. Talking about book of 1 John. Let me keep going. Keep going fast. Okay, F-I-R-S-T. Teacher introducing book of 1 John. What is the teacher? Uh, who is the teacher introduced here? The Holy Spirit. 1 John 2.27. Okay, shall we read 1 John 2.27? It's a very important verse. 1 John chapter 2. A teacher is being introduced. Who is the teacher? 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. 
the anointing which you receive from him abides in you. So you have no need to anyone to teach you. So we are going to close the Bible study. The Bible says you have no need for anyone to teach you, including Duke Gerard, so all of us can go back home. Is that what the verse is talking about? You see the context. So when we when the Bible baffles us, that's when we should look at the context. You know, con looking at con we do that every by default everywhere. You know, when we are in Patni, when somebody asks us the way to paradise, we don't say we don't quote John 3:16. Or we don't quote from one general, uh, we don't quote from Good Friday message, right? Because a guy in Patna, if he is asking direction for paradise, he is talking about the hotel called paradise. So, you know, you, by default, okay, when I talk about sunny, you know, suddenly, okay, there is a, there's a sunny here, I might mean the uh, Nissan sunny or uh, uh, the adult star sunny Leon, I don't know. I don't know. What sunny we are talking about? Or it could be sunny Gavaskar, it could be the hot sun, it's very sunny. It depends on the context. It depends on the context. So what is the context here? When you go up, when you read about 1 John 2, 27, it's talking about these false teachers. These false teachers, they, they deny the that Jesus came in the flesh and they are worldly, they don't love people. So Jesus, so John is saying, don't listen to those false teachers. Why? Those false teachers, you know how they teach? They uh, 1 John 4, 1, we won't read that. They sort of claim that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. In fact, that is a very popular way of passing out false doctrine. The Holy Spirit says to you, dear brother, you must marry that unbeliever. He will not say. The Holy Spirit will never say unmarry the unbeliever. The Holy Spirit says, go bribe that government official. The Holy Spirit will never say, go, go bribe the government but because of that only when that uh, prefix is there, people will believe the lie. So don't believe every spirit that comes. You know, don't believe false prophet who take the name of the Holy Spirit in vain. You have the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean we don't read study Bibles. In fact, I would recommend you buying study Bibles. You have 1,200 rupees and you don't know what to do with 1,200 rupees. Don't sink it in a Levi's jean. Try to get a good study Bible. You can sink, buy a jean now and then, but get a good study Bible. Uh, Nelson study Bible is good. Uh, the, the, the Life Application Study Bible is good. N NIV Study Bible is good. The Spirit of Reformation Study Bible is one of the best I have in my, in my shelf. Uh, you know, several, there are excellent study Bibles written by Bible-believing, evangelical, you know, scholars. You know, we need to spend time reading. Uh, we need to learn from them. Okay. Now, okay. F-I-R-S-T-J. Juvenile Addressing Book of John. Juvenile has become very popular, especially because one guy, the, the guy who Delhi raped, no, the guy, 17 year old guy was the most violent. He's the one who took the rod and put it in the woman's private part. And uh, and the doctors testified they have never seen anybody raped like that in all their life. He was a juvenile, not even an adult. And the book of John ad addresses juveniles. For, for example, 1 John 2, 12 and 13. Can we read that? 2, 12, 13 and 14. John says, what? how does he address the audience? My writing to you little children. Here is a 90 year old man or 80 plus. We don't know his exact age. The Bible doesn't mention it. He's writing to little children. Even uh, young people, teens will look like little kids. He addresses who? Little children or young people. Relatively, he's an 8 year old man. For 8 year old man, 16, 17 year old is a little, little children. Okay. Now, what about us? When we do ministry, whom do we address? Now, uh, I thank God for many churches, big churches we have, and they're all across India and the world. But unfortunately, in very few churches, the the, the, the pillars of the church were the young people. They are, they are they, Pastors fail to address them. Church leaders fail to address them. But I'm glad, I'm grateful to God for people like Duffy Robbins. Who's Duffy Robbins? He's a youth speaker in the United States. Not as famous as Billy Graham. Not as famous as uh, uh, you know, some of the big... Benny Hinn. But he's a man who has given his entire life to preach to young people. Duffy Robbins. You can Google his name. So why? Because of passages like this 1 John. We need to address the young people, the young generation. Now, the advertisers address young people. In fact, Samsung Galaxy, Samsung ad. Oh, now. That's a punchline geared at youth who don't like to wait. Oh, now. Ad for Samsung. Zero down payment, zero interest, and zero, 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 zero. And then before that, the guy finishes 
to speech to all the guys in the corporate room are gone to buy the samsung galaxy <laughs> and the young people are saying i also should not be watching ipl i should go and buy i should also buy samsung galaxy whatever and use my credit card so they are also selling credit living thank god my wife and i we don't have a single loan till date not that taking loans is sin but in fact that gives us a freedom i don't want to be bound by a 20 year old 20 year old chain i don't want to be bound by a 20 year old chain what is that year my 20 year old year my i am free tomorrow god ask me to go to somewhere i can go nobody to stop me it's for practical reasons but you know taking loans and not saying in fact so the advertisers are, are encouraging young people to take a loan to buy their product now how much more we should address the youth of today and that's why you know in our recent magazine the uh, days of the youth i talked about how the young people are why why was it why do i write articles like this the google the gadget generation okay the google generation they don't they don't uh, i say the the young generation of today they don't ask what the bible says they ask what can we google this they are the twitter troop twitter troop 140 characters only for update so they don't want long messages they don't definitely need one they don't need this one hour 40 minute bible study they don't need this they, they want short they want short short pithy statements they are the facebook book a uh, facebook folk which means they are they are looking for appreciation will somebody like the picture i posted today they want appreciation they are the hot a uh, hype high tech herd which means uh, you know they, they 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 don't want government jobs they want a high paying multinational corporate company job though it's high pressure job so we need to understand the young people and we need to drive the gospel drive the gospel to them they are the youtube youth they they believe seeing is believing what is it seeing is believing they are the youtube youth so we must understand the youth of today and give the message to them okay j o on god against antichrist and false prophets you must be on god against antichrist and false prophet this is the message of 1 john now uh, sachin tendulkar celebrated his 40th birthday few days back and outlook magazine brought a issue special dedicated for sachin tendulkar and in that issue sanya mirza hyderabad's uh, uh, tennis star wrote about sachin tendulkar they were talking about the first time they saw sachin and uh, she said first time i met sachin was in the hyderabad hospital and in a hyderabad hospital at a function arranged for the members of the medical fraternity both of us were guests in the occasion yet again what stood out was sachin's humility and modesty and this is uh, this is what he said to the doctors my job of playing cricket is of very little significance when compared to yours I believe I have the luxury of committing some blunders in my field of work but you are far more important and cannot afford to make a single mistake in your job doctors cannot make a mistake but I can make a mistake that was says is trying to humble himself but I want to say I agree with Sachin but I want to tell you something preachers like us we are on a greater risky job that's why James the bible says they are greater judgment is waiting teachers bible teachers why why doctors if they make a mistake only physical death but bible teachers like us become false teachers like what john john is talking about we cause eternal deaths so we have false preachers who are reeling out false doctrine hyper grace doctrine just keep on saying i am the righteousness of god and live as ever whatever you like uh jesus christ came to give you that best star you know? yeah for jesus christ came to give you the best star receive it brother <laughs> receive the ben star right now so this is the preaching so the damage caused by my precious was in fact i can also preach like that but for the grace of god i can preach even better than even worse false doctrines very fully capable fully capable but for the grace of god and what but the danger is you lead people to spiritual death and damnation and you also get damned yourself so dangerous and that's the kind of you know these guys verse 219 john john 219 these people left the church left the community of the church and then they were trying to lead the whole church astray john 226 1 john 226 and they apparently said oh, the holy spirit was inspiring them to teach all the false teachings uh, 1 john 41 and uh, so this is what and they they denied the incarnate incarnation they didn't believe jesus christ was fully god and fully human they failed to love those in need and they argued perhaps that they are sinless these are the characteristics of these false teachers and john also calls them anti christ 
in fact there is one ultimate antichrist coming we don't know his identity some of, some people message me on facebook inbox is barack obama the guy mm. even i am recording it is barack obama the guy i don't know it could be duke jeraj i don't know i hope not it, let let's not get carried away by identifying the attack we need to right now we should, we are we must be more worried about the anti christ for the false teacher and the false god anti christ he will himself introduce himself because he is proud person and a proud person is the one is the one who takes the mic and says i am the anti christ <laughs> no one of the bombers you know what he did the boston bombers after they Sadly. set the two bombs you no know, they kill one guy the elder brother he killed the police officer and then he hijacked a, 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 a chinese american a chinese man's uh, benz car okay uh, and he got into the uh, benz or bmw and then he said you know what i did no what he said you know what i did i just killed a police officer i just killed the police officer you know? so anti christ will introduce themselves we don't have to go on trying to find out who they are right now we anti christ will not introduce themselves they will be very subtle wolves in sheep so we must be worried they are already alive in our, our time already alive in our time we must be we must be worried of those message of their messages we must avoid those messages uh, we must we must listen to the truth of god's word okay j o h j o h hope talking about book of 1 john hope now one of the questions i uh, several young people ask me facebook chat or phone calls or after messages how do i live holy is there a secret to live holy in this in this depraved world the answer comes the answer comes from 1 john chapter 2 verse 28 can we read that 1 john 228 how do we live holy hope now talking about children, now little children abide in him, abide in him so that when he appears so that when he appears we may have confidence we may have confidence and not shrink from him and not shrink from him in shame at his coming okay so the second coming of jesus christ provides one of the greatest motivation for us to live holy jesus christ can come at any time like a thief in the night so when he comes we should not shrink from him we should not be terrorized by him we should not i should not go and hide under the uh, jump inside the well and put the lid over the top or i should not bury myself in a sand dune or uh, go and hide in afghanistan mountain no i should be thrilled by him not terrorized by him but but be thrilled now i should be so close to him day in and day out through the discipline of prayer and the, the discipline of bible reading you know uh, have such close fellowship with him that i am eagerly awaiting him and i i use this lesson many times it's like the girl who's waiting in the hostel for the arrival of her boyfriend who said she would come at 4 it's 4:15 he has still not come and 4:30 not even a miss call and this girl is eagerly waiting waiting the roar of every bike sounds like the bike of our boyfriend you know this is the you know such a such a such a girl you think she will be unfaithful to her boyfriend no she's she's thrilled she wants him to appear so when you are th- so thrilled with jesus and you want him to come back soon you know that's when you beat temptations on a regular basis that's when you beat temptation on a regular basis 1 john 3 2 can we read that hope another ho- uh, hope talking about book of 1 john 1 uh, 1 john chapter 3 verse 2 beloved, beloved we are god's children now we are god's children now book yes, of john is for believers yes 1 john is for believers yeah we are god's children now appear. and what will and what yeah go ahead it does not appear what we shall be but we know that we when he appears we shall be like him but we know when he appears when jesus comes back the second time that's the blessed hope that we have we will be like, like him so we will be one day like jesus like jesus not in his physical appearance that otherwise women also have to become men because jesus was a man not the physical appearance but the spiritual appearance the spiritual jesus was sinless jesus was holy so we will also like him so we will be like him that day so let's get some practice now let's get some practice now so that we will look like him when he appears so that's the motivation for us to live holy so we uh, so let's so that let's get some practice to look like him uh, let's get some practice to look like him now last the last one j o h n not in excusing book of john question mark it's not 
can naughtiness be excused? Question mark. I am not saying that it excuses naughtiness. So question mark. Can you read 1 John 5, 16 and 17? Suddenly it looks, at the first uh, reading, it looks like 1 John 6, 1 John 5, 16 and 17 excuses some naughtiness. Okay. If anyone sees his brother committing what is not a moral sin, okay. he will ask and God, God will give him life for okay. those whose, whose sin is not mortal. Okay, God will give him, okay. Can I read, can I get some no, normal version please? I'm sorry. An NIV. If you see any man. Okay, if any man. Okay. If any man sees his brother sin as sin. Okay. Is not unto death. Sin not unto death. Okay. He shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. Okay. And then next verse. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. He shall, not, he shall pray for it. In fact, so when you read those two verses, you understand there are two categories of sin. Sin unto death and sin not unto death. So which means uh, God will excuse some, some sins he will excuse. Huh? He'll wink, huh? <laughs> Bible, Bible says some naughtiness can be excused. No, no. Now there are, in fact, uh, uh, there are there. Are, in fact, uh, several Bible scholars have tried to explain this passage based on the entire message of the Bible. David Pawson, for example, says sin unto death is talking about the the sin of uh, sin, which Hebrews also talks about, sin of turning your backs on Jesus completely, finally and permanently so that Jesus himself gives up on you. And you have no forgiveness left. No sacrifice left. Hebrews talks, the book of Hebrews talks about it. So that is sin unto death. Which means you're, there is a line and you cross the line of no return. Point of no return. You have gone so far away from Jesus you don't feel like coming back like Judas Iscariot. He sinned, but he didn't feel like coming back. Peter also crossed the line, but he came back. So Peter, he felt the conviction, he came back. But Judas, he felt the conviction, but he never felt like coming back. He was so stubborn in sin, stubborn in love with Satan. So he wanted to go fast to the place Satan had already prepared for him, which is hell. Hell is the highest reward the devil can give you for being a servant of his. That's the biggest price the devil can give you. What is that? Life in hell. So he wanted to go there fast. Take the flight. So he took the suicide route. So that is the sin unto death. Maybe suicide is a sin unto death. Or we, the Bible is not clear. But but for many many times when we have failed God, when you are rebelled, when we are maybe watched porn or told a lie, or uh, when we have rebelled against God in various ways, you know, God speaks to us. His Spirit convicts us, and we come back to Him. And we are saved from death. We are saved from death. So that's the two categories. Committing the unforgivable sin, which God alone knows when you commit and how you commit. And committing the sin where you ask forgiveness. Even here, you need to ask forgiveness. Because John 1, first chapter talks about confessing your sin. And he will faithful, is faithful and just to forgive you of all sin. Which means God forgives you of every sin. It doesn't mean you have to confess every sin that you ever committed, you confess what you remember and God can, forgives everything, God can cleanses you of all unrighteousness. You need to still confess. For, so that's, so the naughtiness, 1 John does not excuse naughtiness. Now, uh, I want to just finish with an anecdote which I, uh, which I, which I just got yesterday. Uh, I was watching CNN uh, and CNN yesterday said Al Qaeda publishes a magazine called Inspire, and that Inspire magazine has got an article on Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, Osama bin Laden founded the organization. It says one article is how to make a bomb in the kitchen. What is the article title? One young man read that article and acted upon that article. How to organize terrorist attacks and sports events. That's another article. <laughs> So there are young people who read that and act on it. So for like one Alsatian dog, I've been barking the message of one John. The last, it's like a little magazine. For the last one and a half hours, do you want to act on it? Close your eyes. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Let's pray. We'll have a time of question and answers. That's after the Bible study when we're having snacks. Uh, but right now, it's time to 
time to think of F I R S T J O H N. I've outlined the message of one John in this acronym. Where do you stand? Are you excusing naughtiness in your life? How about your relationship with people? Is there a trace of Virat Kohli or Gautam Gambhir in your life? A description. Relationship. Do you know that Jesus loved you first? He first loved you. When you are still a sinner, he loved you. He came in search of you. He's like the boy who chased that girl for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I do not know which age you accepted Jesus. And, you know, but he has been chasing you. He has been coming down. He's, he has been pursuing you. He has been speaking through you to the, through the conscience, through the creation, through, the, through, 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 the, through life events, through the pastor's message, through the Bible study. He has been speaking to you. He pursued you to show his love for you. He loved you first. But do you love the world and its pleasures today? The lust of the flesh, the pride of life. The lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Do you love all these three things which 1 John talks about? Do you have an idol in your life? Is the, is the laptop your Lord? Is the Android your Almighty? Do you, are you self-deceived? There, are there some sins that are part of your system and you don't recognize them as sins? Maybe greed, casteism, Lies, you speak lies so often then you don't think lies as lies. Think of lies as lies. It doesn't prick you anymore. Are you self-deceived? These are the messages that are bouncing from the book of 1 John. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% human? Any, anybody who doesn't believe that is a false prophet. And any system that believes that is a false religion, it's a cult. If you believe that, you won't go to heaven. You'll go to hell. At the core of the Christian faith is a doctrine that Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% man. Because he's 100% God, he could die for the infinite number members of the, uh, of the human race. Because he's 100% human, he can be your substitute. Because he's 100% God, what he did 2,000 years ago, because he is God eternal, his sacrifice is eternally valid. He's 100% God. Because he's 100% human, you can actually come to him in faith because he became your substitute. You should have died, but 100% human, Jesus took your place. You can't compromise this doctrine. How do you live holy? Remember, Jesus Christ is coming back. When he comes back, you will be like him. Are you ready? Are you like him already? Are you striving to be like him daily? Yes, you have already been sanctified. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from every sin. You have positional sanctification, no doubt about it. But do you also have practical sanctification on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you beat temptation? Do you say no to sin? No to the lust of the flesh? No to the pride of life? These are questions that you should ask yourself, my young friend. Are you an eyewitness, witness of Jesus? Eyewitness, witness of Jesus. A personal witness of Jesus. I told, I read from the biography of Jim Baker. He said there, was, there were times when I was in the heyday of PTL, when I didn't read the Bible. Then I went to jail for all my crimes. And in the prison, I read the Bible for the first time really read the Bible and understood what God had to tell me that day when in my prison. Do you have a personal touch with God? Are you an eyewitness of Jesus? Is Jesus someone you have seen with your eyes and touched with your hands? This is what God asks you today through this Bible study. Just yield your life. Yield your heart. At the end of this Bible study, the, the only goal I have is, I have no agenda, no strings attached. The only thing I want is, you want, I want you to come one more step closer to Jesus. One more step closer to Jesus. Come, come, come. He invites you. He's a God of love. 
as a god of love but he also wants there is a sin which leads to death which means when you finally reject jesus when you are stubborn in your sin when you still live a defeated life when you make sin your lifestyle and you make sin your practice and you don't you don't really take holy life seriously there will come a point you'll go to the point of no return and from that point you have only one way one direction and that direction is the direction of towards eternal ever burning hell where worm will not die he doesn't want you to go there that's why he died for you on the cross come back to him right now you may be you may i don't you may be anyone who's listening to me maybe via the youtube or via google hangout i don't i don't know who you are but jesus knows you he loves you he loves you i want you to come to him and you can come to him by saying jesus i'm a sinner come into my heart save me wash me cleanse me when you say that he will come to your heart he will forgive you he will save you and you will begin a brand new relationship with jesus and when you begin once you begin one of the most important things you do is to study his word that's what we have done study his word for the last one of us the book of 1 john gracious heavenly father i come to you in jesus name we thank you for this wonderful time that you given us thank you for speaking to us from the book of 1 john various things oh lord forgive us of all our failures at times when we have sinned against you times when we have lord acted in contrary to the word of god times when we have displeased you times when we have uh, lord done things that you don't like cleanse us oh lord with your precious blood the blood that you shed for us on the cross come into our heart oh lord i pray that we will live for you we will reach out to our generation the google generation the twitter troop the facebook folk the youtube youth let's take this messages which which are, which are so relevant from your word and share it with our generation in the one life that we have to live lord only one life it will be soon past whatever we do for jesus will only last thank you lord we are we have an opportunity even today even now to live that one life for you we love you jesus we want to give you the glory we ask all this with thanksgiving in your name amen amen, amen.